So, I've been assembling an engine for my E36, an M52 with a ZF Trans. I'm at the point where I'm ready to mate the engine and the transmission together. And what that means is it's time to install a starter. I'm building kind of one engine out of two, so I have a couple starters laying around. I need to test them to see which one works, or if any of them work, before I assemble the car. So, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how to bench test an E36 starter. This probably applies to any starter. There might be a few differences in connections, but overall, same concept. When it comes to an E36, there's two types of starters. There's this one on the left, which is an early, uh, like an M50 starter. And then when they went OBD2, they switched to a threaded starter. If you notice this one, the flange is smaller and there's no threads. This is a nut and bolt to bolt it onto the trans. This one is just bolts from the front side under the manifold. Makes it a lot easier if you ever have to remove the trans uh, from underneath the car and you don't have to have a wrench on the back side of the nut to loosen it. So with that being said, I'm not gonna use this starter. This is just a spare I have on hand, but the same principle for testing it would be applied uh, just like these other two that I'm gonna do. Which leaves me with these two. These are the ones that the engines I have and the one I'm building came with. So I'm gonna test both of these and see if A, they both work, and then B, which one I wanna use in the car. My preference is leaning towards this one. It looks a little nicer. Uh, but this one might be in just as good a shape, so we'll see. So, here's how I'm going to test these starters. I have a battery sitting next to my workbench on a battery tender. I'm going to connect jumper cables to that. I'm going to put the positive cable on this post here. I'm going to ground the mounting flange of the starter itself. That's where it's going to ground to the engine. There are ground pins on the starter here and here, but I'm going to ground this and just make it easier for myself. Then, I'm going to use screwdrivers and jump from this positive here that I'm supplying from the battery to this here and I'm going to see two things. I need the starter to spin and I need it to also come outward. So I'm testing for both of those functions and kind of how smoothly it does that. So here's my positive and then here's my negative on the ground. Now, like I said, I'm going to take two screwdrivers and just jump from this terminal to the other one. You could probably get away with one, but two just makes it a little easier on yourself. Well, I can see from my side of things that this one's functioning correctly, but I'll move the camera to get a better shot. So like I said, what we're looking for is for the gear to not only spin, but it also needs to slide outward. So it would spin when you crank the car and come outward and catch the flywheel, allowing the car to start. So this one's working correctly. I'll test the other starter just while I have everything set up and I'll probably even test that other one that I'm not going to use just so I know that it's good and I'll mark it to put it on my shelf. So like I said, uh, if the other one works well, I'll probably use it. I just like the way it looks a little more, no real difference between the two, but then I can get this finally installed on the car once I put the transmission on. So, same thing for this one. All right, well this one works too. So like I said, this is the one I'm gonna end up using on the car. Uh, the other one I'll mark, put it on my shelf, and I'll probably use that in my E28 when I go to put that together. Because like I said, using the threaded starter makes a world of difference when you're putting these together.